English story, B2, C1. Take a chance. James lives in London, in a flat near Canary Wharf, the financial capital of the UK. He doesn't work in finance, he can't stand numbers, and actually failed maths at school. He's a teacher, not a maths teacher, thankfully. James works at a primary school. He loves it because he gets loads of holidays. The problem is, he spends a lot of them preparing for the next school term. It really starts to do his head in when, in the summer, his mates are down the pub and he's stuck at home writing reports and PowerPoint presentations. He loves working at a school and helping the students. His friends think his job is easy and that teachers only work from eight till three and then go home. They've really got no idea. They don't realize how cushy they have it in their office jobs. They can switch off when they go home, whereas James always worries about his students and whether everything is ready to go for the next day. He's constantly on edge. All the kids at school want to be in his class because he keeps things fun. And learning can be fun. It's not all textbooks and boring writing exercises. And he wants to show people that. Unfortunately, not all of his colleagues agree, but they are just as boring as those writing exercises. Talking to them is about as exciting as watching paint dry. He came to realise that people don't always like change. Some people enjoy doing the same things day after day. But James would rather explore new things than get stuck in a rut. James moved to London for the teaching job. Now he was ready for something new. He was fed up with the rat race lifestyle in London, the long commutes and the stony faced people on the tube, not to mention the ridiculous rents. There was no fun in it anymore. He really wanted to go travelling, perhaps to New Zealand, but he had to try and find a job that would allow him to do it. It was a hard choice to make, but he really believed in the saying, now or never. He really needed to take a chance and try something new. James was cooking dinner. He was daydreaming and looking out of his window. The view from his kitchen was amazing, a sight for sore eyes. People would pay thousands for this view, his parents would always say. He lived there with his girlfriend, Louise. She worked in the music industry and although it sounded like the job of dreams, the reality was very different. She had to deal with prima donna pop stars and big-headed bass players on a regular basis. She got free tickets for gigs and she'd met loads of famous people. But the novelty had well and truly worn off. As they cooked dinner together, they talked about their day. They were both fed up of work, annoying colleagues and living in a flat with no garden. Yes, okay, so the view was nice, but after a while, it's just a view. They didn't have the time to explore the city like they used to. As they moved up the career ladder, it meant they had less time to do the things they enjoyed. Their bank accounts were full of savings with no time to spend them. 
where's the life in that? You can't take it with you, James's grandma always used to say. They started talking about what they could do with their savings and what was really important to them. They both wanted to live abroad for a few years. Louise also wanted to have some freedom and to be able to work remotely. James wanted freedom too. He still wanted to teach, but he didn't want to be confined to a classroom five days a week. Not only that, but he was getting fed up with parents complaining all the time about every little thing. He felt like being a teacher wasn't just teaching anymore and the pressure was getting too much. Together, James and Louise decided to write an action plan of what they wanted to do within the next year. Number one was to decide on the country they wanted to travel to. Then they realised they would need to retrain if they wanted to be able to work remotely and travel. They checked which countries had working holiday visas. Then they looked at the pros and cons of each country. They decided on New Zealand. They'd always wanted to go, as they both loved the Lord of the Rings. Then they looked into their career options. After taking some online skill and personality tests and going through all of their qualifications, they came up with three options each. For Louise, the tests suggested that she could be a computer programmer, biologist or systems engineer. All of these jobs seem to be so far removed from what she did in the music industry. She realised that she loved formulas, theories and challenges. James's test results made him laugh. James had always been interested in education so it didn't surprise him that primary teacher was suggested. In places two and three were nurse and then mentor. But what kind of mentor? He wasn't so sure. How could he take what he was already good at, teaching, and change it into a job he could do from anywhere in the world? James and Louise discussed their options. They found online courses for everything, from cake baking to astrophysics and everything else in between. What would be best for them to avoid being chained to an office or a desk all day? Louise couldn't stand the thought of dealing with another cocky singer so she searched for programming courses. Some of them were incredibly expensive. She looked for more options and found lots of online schools that wouldn't charge you a course fee if you got a job in one of their suggested companies. Was this a trap? She looked into reviews and forums to see what was legit and what wasn't. Louise was very nervous, but she knew it was the right thing to do. She had to take a chance. She wrote her notice letter for her job and would give it to her boss the next day. As they discussed their ideas, they started to worry about money. How were they going to afford all this? Money doesn't grow on trees. They made a joint decision that they would rent out their flat while they were in New Zealand. Before they went travelling, 
Louise would finish the three-month course and, during this time, they would advertise the flat for rent. The end of the three-month course would fall at the end of the school year. Perfect for James to leave his job too. So, they had a plan. Now all they had to do was take a chance and go for it. During the next few months, Louise and James handed in their notices, interviewed tenants for their flat and planned their trip. They decided they would travel in a camper van. After Louise had finished her notice period at work, she concentrated on her course and planning their trip. She spent long days in the library, hunched over her laptop. She knew it would be worth it, especially when one of the course lecturers noticed how quickly she was picking everything up. The lecturer put Louise's CV forward for a new startup that was looking to train people and would let them work from home. This is too good to be true, Louise thought, but she gave it a go anyway. What did she have to lose? She waited anxiously for two weeks and then came the email. She had been selected for an interview. Programming job interviews were known to be difficult. Normally, you'd have a phone call, then another, then an in-person interview, a technical test, and maybe even a presentation. She was prepared for it to take at least two months. The interview was held over Zoom. It was great! She was honest with her answers and told them exactly what she wanted from the job. The next day, she received a call from the recruitment department to say they wanted to meet her in person. The job would be available remotely, but they wanted to make sure she was a team fit before they offered her the position. Interview day came along. Louise got the tube into central London and tried to calm her nerves along the way by listening to her favourite podcast. Five hours later and she stumbled out of the building back onto the street and gave a huge sigh. That was one of the longest interviews she'd ever had. She thought it had gone well, but you can never really tell, can you? They said they'd call her back by the end of the week. It was now only a month and a half until James would split up from school, not just for the summer, but maybe forever. The kids in his class were gutted when they found out he was leaving. But what could he do? He had to do what felt right for him. And anyway, in a few years, once he'd explored the world, he could always go back to the classroom. James realised that if he wanted to have a flexible lifestyle, he was going to have to start teaching online. He was happy to do that, but he also wanted to have a second income stream. That's when he started to think about YouTube or social media as an option. In his spare time, James watched a lot of educational YouTube from English with Lucy to Real English with Real Teachers, he started to see a pattern of what did and didn't work. He decided to set up a profile. He didn't add any videos yet, but he set up an Instagram and a Twitter page and made short 60-second educational videos to try and drum up some attention. It was a slow process, but as the days went on, 
he started to get a few more followers who weren't just his mates or members of his family. He hoped that his cheeky chappy attitude was a selling point. He had also had interviews for several online language schools and now Louise was getting handy with web development, she showed him how he could make his own website. They seemed to spend more time on their laptops than ever, but it would all be worth it in the long run. Everything seemed to be falling into place. Louise got the job. The company decided to take her on as a trainee and she had been attending workshops and seminars on weekends since the interview. It really helped to prepare her for working remotely in New Zealand. She also got some cool equipment and she met some people who genuinely wanted to change the world. She wasn't working for any company, but a company that was working towards trying to make some environmental and social changes. She couldn't believe how lucky she was. She couldn't wait to finish the course so she could start working full time. James decided to post his first YouTube video. It was a little shaky and his editing could do with some work, but after carefully working out how to do SEO and marketing the video on the right channels, he got over a thousand views. Okay, so he wasn't in the leagues of the super influencers just yet. He needed to post more content. As soon as school was over, he'd have the time. Louise had now finished her course with top marks and had started her new traineeship. She was loving it. No more sweaty commutes, no more gossipy colleagues and crap lunch meetings. She could sit and work in her PJs and enjoy the views of London without having to make pointless chit-chat anymore. James and Louise had also booked their flight out of the UK to New Zealand, but first they were going to spend the summer at home at their parents' house catching up with old friends and family. They really wanted to enjoy the English summer before flying off to the New Zealand summer. James's last day at school flew by in a flash. He was sad to say bye to the kids, but he let them all know about his YouTube channel. He needed all the subscribers he could get. Anyway, he could always pop in and visit them whenever they came back to the UK. Summer was spent enjoying beer gardens, parties and barbecues. It was a perfect way to say goodbye to everyone before their adventure. They had got into a really good routine. It was difficult at first but now they had established that Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday were working days. That way they could have long weekends off. Maybe this would change once they got to New Zealand, but it worked for now. As the days to their flight counted down, they both became excitedly nervous, but they knew their flat was in good hands with lovely tenants and they had prepped everything they needed to do to enjoy their time on the other side of the world. With Louise's new job and James's online teaching and YouTube channel, it was going to be one hell of a ride. They couldn't wait to get to New Zealand and explore. They were glad they decided to take a chance and try something new. We hope you enjoyed this lovely English story. Thank you for stopping by. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share.